Good morning guys! What's up? Ling Ling is back with another video. And yes, today we are outside on campus. But why? Well, because my roommate is sleeping in the room and actually the lighting in there is also really bad. So I thought, why not go for some natural light, go outside, get some fresh air. It's 9 a.m. It's super quiet here. I can only hear actually the water in the back. You can see it here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I thought, why not? So <laughs> today we're gonna sit here and I'm gonna make videos until I can't feel my um, behind anymore. Until then, let's get started. <laughs> so this video is gonna be a small series. I'm not sure how many videos I'm gonna make uh, yet, but I've been writing tons of ideas down. Um, it actually started because, you know, I'm doing an internship in a Mandarin school and I have to find uh, things and ideas to write about for their blog. So of course that is kind of like inspiring me, you know, giving me tons of ideas. And of course I want to share with you guys. I also received some comments. Um, on some of my videos like how did you learn Chinese or was it difficult you know so yes without further ado let me introduce the new series called Chinese language I know very creative all for keywords here I would have called it something more creative like lost in translation I did that before but you know I have to have some keywords people can find so Sorry for that. We can call it lost in translation just between the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, the first video today is basically just going to be about my tri my trip. No, not my trip. It's basically just going to be about me and my um what is that called? Travel with no, not travel. Journey. There we go. Me and my journey with Chinese language. When did I learn it? How did I learn it? Was it difficult? Yes, we're going to go through these three things. So let's get started. So first, when did I learn Chinese? The first time I came to China was in 2011. It was in August and I had no idea about the fact that I would, you know, love China forever afterwards. I was just going for an adventure for six months six in Chinese uh, six months and uh, I was definitely not gonna learn the language like why would I do that you know everyone spoke English right <laughs> ha 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 well that's what I thought <laughs> I got surprised when I arrived here so I started to learn a little bit on the street when I was with taxi drivers the taxi drivers didn't speak a single word of English I was like okay I kind of have to learn something and um, yeah, so I learned a few things and I actually thought it was kind of funny, you know, and uh, I was with an agency, Imachi, you can see my discount code below, <laughs> um, if you're interested, of course. Um, yeah, so I was with uh, Imachi and they gave me a small dictionary book, like with very simple phrases, things I would need when I was out and about, and it was very, very useful. So I tried to read it. It was so much funny when people actually understood what I said, I'd be like, and I probably said it like really like I probably pronounced it really wrong but sometimes people actually understood what I said and I was just so excited <laughs> so yeah I just got a really good feeling with it I remember I did a, a few classes in the beginning image she also gave us some Mandarin class and they were like oh that's not funny no, it's I thought that's not funny at all. I don't understand what they're saying and I keep forgetting the most simple words. But anyway, of course at some point I started to understand a little bit more and I actually kept learning it on the street and I met some Chinese people and then I learned a little bit more and I didn't do anything official like any, um, you know, professional classes before after like half a year where I've just been talking to security guards on the street. There are a lot of security guards uh, standing outside your door all the time and also, you know, Chinese uh, guy who took me out for coffee and cake a very often shout out to him he was definitely one of my um, best teachers actually you know he made me believe that I could do it and he was yeah he was just very supporting it was great ate a lot of cake though you don't have to eat cake every time you want to learn <laughs> something you're gonna get fat just saying when 2011 
how did I learn it? Mostly on the street. I bought small books uh, for children. I read about Barbie and her magic wonderland uh, in the sea. And um, my new Chinese friend also helped me. We walked around and I was like, does that mean person? And he's like, no, that means exit. And I was like, meh. Why is it so damn difficult? <laughs> but yeah, it was basically just slow learning process, you know. I didn't want to be fluent or anything. I just want to learn a little bit so I could get around. And I remember how excited I was the first time I took a taxi and I could actually talk with the driver. I was just like, oh my God, he gets me, he gets me. <laughs> We're on the same level now. I'm not a silly for an idiot coming here and don't know anything anymore. It was such a pleasure and I think those small, you know, ex they, those small things just made me want to practice more and become better. And also I was teaching English so I brought crayons every day to school and when I came back to my um, apartment complex the the security guard was also was always standing outside. It was usually the same person or the same two or three guys. And they were so excited to talk to me. So because I brought the crayon, so I was like drawing, I was drawing a little horse and they were like, oh, EP Ma. And I was like, oh, and I was like, this, the sun is nice today, you know, but I didn't know how to say sun. And they were like, oh, Taiyang. And then they wrote it down and it was just great. It was just a really nice way, you know, to learn Chinese. I've never felt any pressure with learning Chinese because it didn't have like a moody I didn't have a goal to be fluent so it kind of just you know came along and it was a great <clears throat> it was a great accomplishment in the end but I think it was a really good way to learn the Mandarin and Chinese I didn't I didn't go to a school and say oh I have to learn this this and that and take 10 tests and then I need to be finished at this amount of time uh, after this amount of time, no, it was just very chill and very nice. So was it difficult? Yes, of course it was difficult. Uh, Danish language, I also speak English, obviously. Um, and Chinese is just super far away. Like, I don't think you can find any languages that's more far from each other. I don't know, that's what I felt anyway. So it was a long learning progress and very slow, but you know, I took one step at a time and it was annoying sometimes, but there were also good times. Yeah, I just really like learning Mandarin, Chinese Mandarin. I was actually in the South. What is going on with my hair? I got a screen now so I can see myself. It's not good because I get, uh, uh, yeah, unfocused. <laughs> I focus on my hair instead of my talking, so I guess. <laughs> so it's difficult, but if you try and if you work hard and if you speak to Chinese people and if you, you know, immerse yourself in a town where there are not any foreigners, like don't go to Beijing or Shanghai to learn uh, Chinese. You have to go to a smaller town, um, which is a much better and faster way to get to know the language and also, um, I don't know, I told you guys earlier in another video that I didn't, uh, I sold my smartphone before I came to China because I wanted to immerse 100% and uh, it's not always cool because the phone I had couldn't help me translate if I didn't understand anything but then again you know I I learned anyway and it was a good way because I had no VPN either so I couldn't really get into contact with anyone at home <laughs> um, a little depressing sometimes but then again you know I learned from it and I wrote my blog and I learned more Chinese so that was a good thing anyways uh, I don't know if this uh, gave you any uh, interesting information I think it was just my story so this is the first video of the Chinese language series and uh, I hope you enjoyed it anyways and I hope you enjoy this different kind of setting I kind of like it actually and uh, you know who cares if I can't feel my bum anymore right it's not important no no it's not important and now the Sun is coming up in the back great I need to change my location probably anyways thank you guys for watching I hope you're having a great day or uh, evening wherever you are in the world and I'll see you again very very soon. See ya and Sai Jian. Bye bye.